everybody. Welcome to this week's midweek message. We're so glad that you decided to join us today on Facebook Live. And listen, real quick, I want you to like and share this post right now. Go ahead and do that because listen, that's how you get the message out. That's how everybody hears the gospel is when you do just something as simple as liking and sharing a post. So go ahead and do that right now. I'm glad that we have this opportunity. We can come together. But listen, this Sunday is Father's Day. So I want you to get all your daddies to get to church this Sunday. It's going to be an awesome time in the Lord. We got something special planned for them. So make sure you get here this Sunday at 11 a.m. But I'm ready to give you the message if you're ready to listen. So let's get to it. Let's get to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. I got an awesome word. I think it's a timely word that we all need to hear. Amen. Exodus chapter 14. We're going to start reading at verse 21. And this is in the New King James Version. It said, and this is quite a bit of reading, so go ahead and buckle your seatbelts. If you didn't get your Bible reading today, you're going to get it in right now, okay? All right, verse 21, it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind and all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. Talking about the children of Israel when they came to the Red Sea. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them in the midst of the sea, and all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of Egyptians through the pillar of the of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. Egyptians. Ain't you glad that your God troubles your enemy? Amen. That's awesome. He troubled the army of the Egyptians and he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fights for them and against the Egyptians. Ain't it awesome that the Lord fights for us? Man, that, that just gets me excited. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians. Egyptians and on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained, but the children of Israel that had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall on them to their right hand and their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and the, in Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. And thus Israel saw the, a, the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. And I want, where I'm getting my message out of tonight is out of verse 31, the very last verse we read, thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Now, I'm going to get to preaching, but listen, I want you to do something for me. I want you to like. I want you to share. I want you to hit those hearts. I want you to comment. Amen. Hallelujah. Preach, Brother James, whatever you want to say. But I want you to get with me tonight, okay? But I want to preach on the subject on the other side. On the other side. Come on, church, and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're so thankful to be in your presence. We're thankful that no matter, no matter where we are at, we can go into the throne room of God. We don't have to be in the church house, God. We can be in our homes and go into the presence of God. We can be in our workplace and go into the presence of God. We can be in public and still go into the presence of God. You're not defined by walls, and God, for that, we are grateful. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would anoint me, that as I preach, Father, Holy Spirit, I can't do this without you. I need you to speak through me, preach through me. Me. I use me for your glory. Let every word that proceeds out of my mouth be yours, God, and let it drip with the oil of the anointing. And God, I pray, Lord God, that you would open up our ears, open up our minds, and open up our hearts to receive the word that is going to go forth. God, let it land on good ground. Let it bring forth fruit in due season. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. 
You know, uh, one of the things that I really kind of dread doing, and I don't know if you're this way, but one of the things I really dread doing is I dread going to the dentist. That's probably one of the top 10 things I hate doing is going to the dentist. No offense to any dentist out there, okay? We love you and we love you to life, but but it's hard to be in your, uh, your offices, okay? But uh, I, I'm not a big uh, fan of going to the dentist. It's one of the things I hate doing the most. And uh, I, it's just, I don't know if it's just me or not, but when I sit down in that chair and they start putting, you know, the, all the painkillers and stuff in your mouth and you start feeling the anesthesia and all that stuff, it's just, it's really rough and I, I don't like the way it makes me feel. And then they start to go in there and then they're drilling and, and they're cleaning your teeth and they're doing all this stuff. They're trying to fix things and they're making sure your mouth is good. And, and there's nothing worse than when you got a cavity and you sit down in that chair and they bring out that, that drill and it starts to whiz, you know, it makes that noise and that that high pitch noise and then they start to drill and it just it's uncomfortable it's a painful and all where they're done trying to do that what are they doing they're trying to talk to you they got their hand your their hands in your mouth and they're drilling in your mouth and they got that little sucker thing in your mouth and they're drilling and they're trying to talk to you of all things but uh I, it's just uncomfortable and I, I just don't like it and for some reason that that little bit of time that you're in there just seems like it goes on and on and on and and on for eternity. Just feels like you're just forever sitting in a chair waiting for the appointment to be done, waiting for the dentist to finish up their work. It just feels like it goes on forever. And I think we feel like that sometimes. Have you ever felt like when something is just uncomfortable and something is rough and you don't like the way it feels and it just makes it feel like it goes on forever? Have you ever been in that place where you're in a place where it just is uncomfortable and, and you just don't like it? It's not something that you want to be in, but it just feels like it goes on forever and ever. If you ever had a conversation with someone, it just feels like it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't. We've all been in that place where we're stuck in a place where we don't want to be and it just feels like time just goes on and on and on and we're just stuck in a place and it just feels like it's been forever that we've been in that place and and I think we're in that place right now. Listen, we've been in a pandemic. We got a, a lot of uproar going on in our nation right now and it's a struggle right now. It's hard. It's, it's a difficult place to be in. We're not created to be in our homes and staying in our homes. We're not created to always we be wearing masks. We're not created to be six feet apart. We're not created to deal with all this stuff. It's just, it's difficult and it's frustrating and it's hard. And one of the things about being in a difficult situation is it feels like it goes on and on and on and on. And that's a hard place to be in because then you start beginning to feel like it's never going to end. And it's easy to feel hopeless in times of difficulty. It's easy to feel hopeless when things just keep going on and on and and on. When we look at our nation, it's easy to feel hopeless and feels like and feel like it's never going to end. It's never going to go back to normal. It's it's easy to look at our family situations when when our family just ain't getting along and it feels like it's falling apart. It's easy to look at that with hopelessness and despair and say it's never going to end. It's never going to change. It's easy to look at an addiction and say this is never going to change. It's easy to look at that pattern of sin we're in and feel like it's never going to change. It's easy to look at all this stuff and feel like, God, I'm just stuck in this place and I can't get out. I'm stuck in this place and it's just never going to end. There's never going to be an end to this. And it's just, just, it's just hopeless and it's frustrating and it's aggravating. And I feel like a lot of us are stuck in that spot right now where we're just in a place of hopelessness. And there's never going to be a change in our culture. There's never going to be a change in our nation. There's never going to be a change. And it, it, our, our, our nation is going to remain divided. Our, and we're going to have always deal with a pandemic. And it's just a struggle. It's hard. And it feels like it's always going going to be this way. But one thing that I have learned in life is that storms do come, but they don't last forever. Come on, somebody. That's good. Storms do come, but they don't last forever. They're not meant to stay. When storms may come and they may blow, the winds may blow real hard and the lightning may flash and the thunder may roll and the rain may pour, but it's not going to stay that way. That storm will pass. And let me tell you, when it does pass, it's going to bring some good things. It's going to bring some growth. It's going to bring some nourishment. 
and it's going to bless us in some way. Storms may come, but they will go and there will be blessing on the other side. And we see this demonstrated biblically in Exodus chapter 14. This is one of the most popular and most well-known Bible stories that we all know. We all know about Moses and the Red Sea. We all know about the children of Israel. But for those of you who don't know, or maybe you need a brush-up course, come on somebody. We all need it. Come on now. We, uh, we don't memorize this book. We don't have it memorized from front to back. I'm not that good yet. I need a brush-up. So for those who need a brush-up course, listen. Israel, at this point in time, had just been delivered out of the hands of Egypt. They had been in slavery to Egypt. Egypt for 400 years. 400 years they have been stuck in a place of slavery, stuck in a place of oppression, stuck in a place of abuse, and they had been this way for 400 years, but the children of Israel would cry out to Yahweh, cry out to God, and say, God, send us a deliverer. God, deliver us from this place. Deliver us from this oppression. Deliver us from this slavery. And can I tell you, God heard his children. I'm here to encourage you to let you know God still hears you. Even in the midst of a mess, he still hears you. Even in the midst of addiction, he still hears you. God is listening to his children. I'm thankful for that. God listens to his children and he heard Israel crying out for God to deliver them. So God sent a deliverer and his name was Moses. Moses came to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, I need you to let the Israelites go. I need you to let God's people go. I, you need to let them be free from slavery and obviously we all know the story a Pharaoh had hardened his heart and so God had to send plagues and with every plague God had uh, uh, Pharaoh had hardened his heart towards the Lord and every plague came it just got harder and harder and harder and, and by the point where they had to send the death angel and the death angel came and it passed over the people of God passed over the children of Israel but it came and it visited all the families in Egypt and people had died and there was a big big, huge ordeal. And then finally, Pharaoh said, you know what? I'll, I'm letting you go. I, you know what? I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go and do your thing. I'm going to do what God says. Go ahead and get out of my sight. So guess what? The children of Israel packed their bags. There was millions and millions of people at this point. Millions of people. And they all packed their bags, get their stuff, and they head out. And they have been delivered from the hands of Egypt. How amazing is that? That God delivered them out of the hands of their oppressor, delivered them out of the hands of those who had them slavery in, in, in slavery. And I'm here to tell you that God will do the same for you. He will deliver you out of your oppression, deliver you out of abuse, deliver out of those things that hold you abound and abuse you. God will deliver you out of those things. And here Israel is being delivered out of the hands of Egypt. And so God sends them on their way. But listen, you think that they're out? You think that they're free? But that's not the end of the story. See, they go and God says, you know, and they get to the Red Sea. They get to this place where it's just, it's, it's just a huge part of water. It's just a huge body of water. And in order to be a, to get to the other side, to get to where they're going, they have to cross the Red Sea. But it is impossible. It is humanly impossible to get across the Red Sea. So they camp there and guess what? All of a sudden, Pharaoh decides to change his mind. And so now, not only are they in, uh, um, they are they in the, the wilderness of the Red Sea, not only are they struggling, not only are they tired, but now they hear the rush of chariots because Pharaoh has changed his mind and decides that he doesn't want to let Israel go. So now, not only are they the Red Sea, not only are they the wilderness, not only are they dealing with all this stuff, but now they have Pharaoh pushing them and ready to kill them and ready to slaughter them and ready to bring them back into slavery. I don't know about you, but that is one stressful situation. That is one crazy situation and it just feels like everything is piling up against them. Have you ever felt like life has just piled up against you? Do you ever feel like the children of Israel feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place? Have you ever felt like life is just 
piling up on you and you can't breathe. You just worry and you're stressed out and you don't know how you're going to make it because life is just piling up and up and up. Not only are you dealing with family, but now you got to deal with your finance. Not only are you dealing with your finance, but now you got to deal with your marriage. It's just life piling up on top of each other. Have you ever been in that place? Have you ever felt that struggle? Because that's what the people of God are in right now. They're in that situation. And here's the hardest part. Here's the most difficult part in my mind is God led them to this point. Now, when that you read in a, in a little bit before this chapter where it said that it says that God delivered them out of the hands of Egypt and was taking them to the promised land. And it was a shorter way to go through the land of the Philistines. It would have been a shorter way to go through there. But God knew that they would end up in war. So God said, I want you to go around it. And I want you to go through the wilderness of the Red Sea. It was the leading of God that brought them to this place of opposition. It was the leading of God that brought them to the Red Sea. See, and that's the hard part in my mind to believe that God has brought them to this place where they are between a rock and a hard place. It was God who brought them this way. And I know a lot of times it's hard to sit there and believe that, you know, God loves us and cares for us when we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. When life is just piling up on us, it's hard to believe that God is with us and God cares for us. Matter of fact, when life starts to pile up on us, we feel like God abandons us, like God isn't around us, that we messed up and we're in a place where we shouldn't be. But it's by the leading of God and it's a way that God wants to bless us. Let me prove it to you because the Bible says that that if they would have went the shorter way, the way that they wanted to go, they would have ended up in war and they would have been destroyed. They would have been decimated because they went the shorter way. Can I tell you, just because it's shorter doesn't mean it's better. Oh, just because it's easier doesn't mean it's better. We want to go the easy way. Come on now, you know it's true. We want to go the easy way, but the easy way ain't always the best way. We want to go God's way, not the easy way. We want to go to God's way. And because they went God's way, they were saved from being destroyed. But the problem is, is now they got a Red Sea in front of them. They got Pharaoh's army behind them, and they don't know where to go. And they all became to be upset. They were, they're mad. All the people of Israel are, are aggravated. They're looking at Moses, yelling at Moses, saying, Is there, was there not enough graves in Egypt that you had to bring us out here to die? It was better in Egypt. We should have just been in Egypt. And then they're mad at God because they thought God was delivering them. Now they're in a place where it's a struggle. And now they're in a place where they are just ag aggravated and upset and frustrated. And I know we can all relate to that. Where we're just aggravated and frustrated and feel like it's all over. It's, we're going to die. There's no end to this. We're all, it's just over. We might as well give up now. And we're just going to be stuck in this place where we're just going to be in slavery. Stuck in this place where we're going to be murdered. Stuck in this place where we're going to be abused. And it's easy to feel stuck, but listen to this. God speaks up and says, listen, i got a plan. He said, Moses, I want you to stretch your hand out towards the Red Sea. I want you to stretch your hand out and see what I'm going to do. So what does Moses do? Moses stretches his hand out. And when he stretches his hand out, I feel the Lord. The water began to part. He split the Red Sea. And all of a sudden, where there was an ocean, where there was a sea, where there, it was impossible to cross. All of a sudden, now there's a highway. Now there's a place to cross where once was a, a, a huge body of water is now dry land. And three million people began to walk across the Red Sea. And none of them were harmed. None of them were hurt. They literally walked across the Red Sea. And then all of a sudden, the, the, the Pharaoh's army begins to come in and chase them down through the Red Sea. They're chasing them through the Red Sea. They're going through the dry land. But God sees it and says, I got a plan for this. I got something for them. He begins to make their wheels fall off. He begins to make it hard for them to drive. They get scared. They say, we need to retreat, but they did it. And then when all the children of Israel had crossed over safely, God lets the water crash in on Pharaoh's army. And now the children of Israel who are once in a hard place, the children of Israel who were once in a place where they were certain for death, where it seemed like nothing was going to get better, where it didn't seem like blessing was anywhere, 
anywhere near them, all of a sudden they're looking out over the ocean and the ones who were their enemy, the ones who abused them, the ones who oppressed them, now have been swallowed up by the Red Sea and God had destroyed their enemy. God had destroyed the people who abused them and now they are on the other side of the place of the, the Red Sea. They're on the other side and they're in a place of blessing. They've seen the enemy destroyed. Now they are alive. They've seen a miracle before them. And I love what this verse says in 30 and 31. It says, so the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Can I tell you something? Because they allowed God to bring them into that place and when they were on the other side of that struggle, on the other side of the opposition, on the other side of the impossibility, possibility. They seen the miracle working hand of God. They seen how powerful and how great God is. And now they see they are they are on the other side. They got to experience a miracle. They experience a deeper wonder and belief in Yahweh God. And now they're in standing in the blessing of the Lord. Let me tell you they were destined for destruction, but God stepped in and made a way. And I'm here to tell you that you may be in a place where it feels like you've been stuck in that place forever. You've been stuck in the struggle forever, the pain, the hurt in forever. But if you just trust God, if you just keep following his spirit, stay in the spirit. Like I said on Sunday, if we just stay in the spirit, stay in his presence and trust God, God will take us to the other side because there is another side. There's an, there's another side. There's a, there's an ending to all this for America. There's an ending to all this. God will bring blessing on the other side. If we just trust God, God. I'm telling you, you may be in a struggle right now, but on the other side of that struggle is blessing. On the other side of that struggle is a miracle. On the other side of that struggle is everything you ever needed. I'm here to tell you, just keep holding on because God will bring you a blessing on the other side. So right now, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. If you're listening to me and you're saying, James, this is all good and all, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I don't know this Jesus. I don't know this God you're talking about. And I, my life is in a place right now where I just feel like I'm stuck in a bad spot. I'm, I'm in a rock in a hard place and I'm struggling right now. And I want to give this God a chance. I want to experience this love you're talking about. I want to experience this miracle you're talking about. So I want to give my life to Jesus. Or maybe you're listening to me and you're saying, James, I used to know Jesus. I used to walk and talk with them. I used to have a relationship with them, but I've let the world pull me away, and now I'm stuck in a bad spot, and I don't know how to get out of it. It just feels like this thing is never going to end, and I want to I want to recommit to Jesus. I want to get back to that hope that only Jesus has, that hope that is our anchor, and I want to get back to that. I want to recommit to Jesus. If that's you, I want you, if you want to give your life to Christ, Jesus or you want to give your life back to Christ, I want you to right now, I want you to bow your head, close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord, come into my life. Make me yours from this day forward. I believe you died on the cross for my sin and you rose again for my victory. Lord, make me new. Make me better. Forgive me of every sin. And Lord, today I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it from the bottom of your heart, I want you to comment down below and let us know that you got saved or you rededicated your life. It is the best decision you will ever make in your entire life. It is amazing. And so let us know if you don't want to comment, direct messages so that we know you got saved or you rededicated your life to Christ. But real quick, I want to pray over every single person right now. If you're feeling like you are struggling, if you feel like you're stuck in the struggle, if you feel like there's never going to be an end to this hard time, to this hardship, to this trial, you feel like it's just never going to end and you want to see the other side. You're saying, God, please let me see the other side. Let me see the blessing. Let me see the miracle. Let me get a deeper wonder and belief of your presence. God, I want to know you more and I want to see the other side. If that's you, I want you to right now raise your hand, bow your head, close your eyes, whatever you feel comfortable with, I'm going to pray over you right now. So come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray for every single person.
person, Father, who is hurting, who is struggling. God, for every person who feels like they're stuck in a hard place, stuck in this trial, stuck in this place of opposition, and God, they're just feeling hopeless. They're feeling like they're in despair, feeling like it's never going to get better. Lord, right now, I pray over them, God, that, Lord, that they will see the other side. Lord, God, give them the determination and endurance to, to, uh, to go through this struggle, to go through this hard time, because, God, I know that if you brought us to it, you'll bring us through it, God. I know that if you, if you brought us to it, that on the other side, there's a blessing to it. So, God, I pray over them that you would give them faith, that you would give them endurance, that you would give them strength. And, God, I pray that when they get to the other side, Lord, I pray that there would be a huge miracle, that they would see, God, that you have got blessing on the other side. So, Lord, God, I pray, touch their life in a real and radical and drastic way. And, God, I pray that most of all that you would show yourself, that you would show yourself that you are God, that you are strong, and that you are mighty. God, I pray, show yourself strong in this time. And, God, you will get every bit of the praise, the glory, and honor, and Jesus will be lifted high. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen, amen. Listen, we are so thankful that you joined us today. I hope this word blessed you. I hope it encouraged you. Listen, if you think it'll encourage somebody, share it with them. Send it to them. Let them see this message because that's how we spread the gospel is by showing others the love, the mercy, and the grace of God. Listen, church, I can't wait to see you Sunday. I hope you're making plans to be with us on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. because we're going to have an awesome time in the Lord. I can't wait to see you. I love you to life. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Hey everybody, at this time we are going to take up our tithes and our offerings. You know, one thing I know about God is He loves to bless His people. He loves to bless His children. It's one of the things that He loves to do, is He loves to bless us. And one way we can be blessed is by giving. It's, our, it's another form of worship. When we give in tithes and offerings like the Lord has commanded us to do, He said He would give us blessings on blessings on blessings. And listen, it's His first anyways. He's the one that gave it to us, so we're just giving back what, he already, what already belongs to Him. So I'll right, right now, I want to pray over it, but before, I want to let you know how you can give. You can give through our Easy Tithe app, or you can do our Text to Tithe, which is 734-304-5080. Once again, that is 734-304-5080, and you can send your gift in that way. And we thank you, every single person who has given during this time. I know it's helped us to keep going. It's helped the church to be blessed and to be able to bless others through different outreaches in different ways. So we thank you for giving. But right now, I just want to pray over the offering. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we're so thankful that we can come together, Lord, and we can bless your holy name through giving. And God, you command us to give. And you said that when we give, you would give back to us. You would bless us in ways that we could never even think. And it would be a blessing on blessing kind of blessing so Lord God I pray bless every single person who gives God Lord I pray bless them financially God keep them covered during this time and Lord we just praise you and thank you for all that you've done and all that you are and God let these gifts go to help further the kingdom of God and do what you've called us to do in Jesus name we pray amen amen